Arkansas is home to over 50 amazing state parks, and each one of them has a story. Today, we share the history and beauty of Devil's Den State Park. We also show some more amazing innovations in the camping industry, and we have a first fish flashback to show you no matter the age, today is the best day to go out and catch your first fish. Welcome to this edition of Arkansas's Great Outdoors. Devil's Den State Park is known statewide as a showcase of mountainous beauty with amazing hiking trails, campsites, scenic drop-offs, and mountain biking. But the history of its creation sometimes gets glossed over. The early days of Devil's Den celebrate and honor Arkansas's past. A little over 90 years ago, the country needed help. The devastating effects of the Great Depression included unemployment and hopelessness. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt created the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, which in turn created six Arkansas state parks. Most of them were for young, unmarried men between the ages of uh, 18 to 25. Now like at Petty Jean, it was for World War I vets, but most of them were for the young unmarried men. And the reason for that is that was one of the largest unemployment uh, pools of people at that time. And so it was really FDR's one of his kind of pet programs and Devil's Den obviously benefited from it. The men earned a dollar a day, $30 a month. They sent $25 home and kept five for themselves. They got room and board and the inner strength and self-respect knowing that despite tough financial times, they were able to contribute. They provided for their families and were building something special that would last for generations. And probably in, in my career at Devil's Den, one of the most interesting and really uh, rewarding parts of this job was we got to meet a lot of the CCC guys. Up until about 10 years ago, they still had a reunion. And those guys were really proud of the work they did. And they also, though, revered as Devil's Den and, and the other parks is kind of something that saved them and their family and it also helped save a nation. While some of the workers returned home and some stayed in Arkansas, over the nine years the CCC was at Devil's Den, these men got used to living in barracks and a working, disciplined lifestyle. It came in handy when the nation called again for the greatest generation to go out and win World War II. It's easy to go to Devil's Den and appreciate the natural beauty, but also rewarding is knowing what it took how the park received the effort of grateful workers. It also gave those workers a gift of much needed employment, of much appreciated self-respect, and a much visited state park, a monument to the men and their families who made it all possible. The men of the CCC were paid $30 a month, which is about $700 a month in today's money. But they were also given room and board. I'm standing in the remains of the mess hall and over here is where the kitchen was. There's even a root cellar over there. They started at 6 a.m. every morning. They would end at 3.45 in the afternoon and receive training in a trade that they were able to use to get work after they finished. People just don't, a lot of people don't realize that like some of our trails were originally built by the CCC. The cabins, uh, even inside the cabin, some of the furniture, it was kind of all encompassing. The furniture was built by them while they were here. And they were here from 1933 to 42. So it was a, a, a camp that was pretty long in its existence. Now you have a little more perspective the next time you visit Devil's Den of those who blazed the trails 90 years ago 
and their gratitude for the work, their pride in their work, and how that work even helped prepare them to go and win World War II. Whether you're hiking Devil's Den or any of our state's hiking trails, we're here to help you enjoy those experiences with our weekly tips from Mallory Lindsay with Bad Boy Mowers. So you found your perfect boot, you broke it in, but for some reason you're still feeling pressure points. It doesn't mean that your boot is a bad fit, you might just have to fix your laces. The first one is called box lacing or window lacing, and that's when you have some pressure points on the top of your boot. You will lace where the toes are to make sure you have support where your toes are, and then you leave the section open, you just lace it on the sides, and then you bring them back together around your ankle. Another version I really like is when you feel like your toes are getting really cramped, which is very common when you're out on the trail. The way you can alleviate that is you're gonna unlace your boot completely, and then you're going to just skip the first couple of laces where your toes are, and then lace like regular when you're up at, um, all the way up your boot. Now, if you're wanting some extra support around your ankle, or maybe you're noticing that after you're climbing over some rocks and really moving your foot that it's starting to loosen up, you can try something called a surgeon's knot. And that is when you go to tie and you wrap the laces twice, you make it nice and tight, and then immediately go into those hooks. I only have one hook on my boot, but you would do the same thing and lace it all the way up the hooks. That makes it really tight and strong, and it won't loosen up when you go on your hike. When we come back, we visit one of our favorite first fish segments with a successful businessman who accomplished just about everything you can in life, except catch a fish. Arkansas's Great Outdoors is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers, by Visit Hot Springs, America's first resort, by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, by Vexus Boats, and by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish, the safe bait. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. There's an old saying in the stock markets, the best time to invest is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Such is the case with fishing. If you've never done it, well, there's no better time than the present to start. And there's not a better area to begin that process than Arkansas. We love to introduce new anglers to the sport. And here's one of our favorite first fish segments. We've got Bob Cahoon with us here. Now, Bob, you have done a lot of things in life but you haven't caught a fish yet, right? I have not, no. So this no is fish. a very important check mark for you. It absolutely is. You've lived a lot of different places across both oceans. Correct, yeah. And now you're here in Arkansas, what are you doing here? Uh, working with uh, about 200 missionaries. Okay, yeah. so you are volunteering your time now. We are. You're here for how long? Three years. Three years. Yeah. Three years of volunteer service to help spread the word of the gospel. Absolutely. Now you know, uh, about half the apostles were fishermen. They sure were. So, you got, I'm not an apostle. This, there you go. <laughs> not yet, <laughs> but this might help. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out were there any apostles that were golfers? <laughs> you know, I bet there, there, there definitely were. There's a lot of things you can tie in there. Okay. So, Bob is an avid golfer, and we're going to talk about some of the similarities between golf and fishing as we go through okay, the day. Very good. Okay. The first thing I'd like to do, let's talk, let's do a little casting lesson. Okay. Okay. So, we've got right here, We've got, we've got just your, kind of your basic spinning reel. So you, can you feel a little bit yeah, of the whipping action absolutely. there? Yeah. Okay. A little, little like a driver. Okay, a little like a driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that would be like a stiff action. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, so just for comparison, I want you to take this, which is our uh, little light that we use to run on the boat at night, uh, and do the same thing. A little, little, little rigid. A little rigid, yeah, a little yes, rigid. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what, we, what we're doing is this rod, when it flexes, it does two things for you okay. as a fisherman. Part one is when you're casting, it gives you that whipping action, which allows you to cast it farther. further. Yeah. Part two, this is the important part, when you actually hook onto a fish, that flex 
allows that hook to stay in the fish's mouth. Gotcha. Because otherwise, yeah. if it was stiff like that, right. you wouldn't be able to keep the pressure applied on the fish, and the fish could just okay. spit it out, or it'd be a lot more able to do that. Very good. Okay. So we're going to cast with that and not okay. that. Okay. All right. Very good. And so what we'll do now is we're going to rig you up with a minnow. Okay. All right. Put your finger okay. on the line okay. like this, yep. and then now that you've got that line secure, we flip the bale. Just for grins, let go with your finger and see what happens. That'll drop. There, so it drops like that. So that's okay. what we're doing. Okay. And so we'll reel that up, and then you and then you kind of bring it up to where the the uh, line is at its closest point to the rod. That's the easiest way to grab it with your finger. Okay. And let her go. Just like that. Flip oh yeah. It. And then yeah, close the bale now, and now okay. you can retrieve as soon as the fish grabs okay. it. Okay. Gotcha. So what you do is you're watching that bobber. bobber. Yep. And, and a couple of things will happen. If the minnow starts to get a little nervous, you, the bobber will move a little bit. And that's a good sign. Because okay. if the minnow's nervous, He's got that, coming that at means him. there's a predator coming. When the bobber gets pulled all the way under the water, now yeah. it's game on. And then you set the hook. And just set the hook is, all you do is you just take that fishing rod and move it, just get it to 12 o'clock. Okay. Just like that. All right. Bob is just getting going and you won't want to miss his magic moment coming up a little later in the show. Now, if any of you would like to catch your first ever fish with us, send us an email at firstfish at arkansasgreatoutdoors.com. Or if you know someone who would like to join us, send us that email. We love seeing people of all ages join the team. Now, outside, things can happen, but if you are prepared, there is no need to fear. Our weekly safety tips are here, brought to you by our friends at the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Hey guys, John Burden with Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. I just want to talk to you a little bit about slip and fall hazards when you're out fishing this season. Everybody is going to either be out on a boat or out on the bank, and both are going to be important to be paying attention to your footwear. If you're getting in and out of boats onto, say, a slippery dock or into a wet boat, you want to make sure to have proper footwear on. Something flat soled with good grip is going to keep you safe. If you're out bank fishing, you want to consider wearing footwear that's going to keep you dry. If you're near the water, maybe out of the mud if you're going to need extra traction there, but especially you need to be careful around rocks if you're making your way down the bank side. So be mindful of your footwear selection when you're out there fishing because nothing's going to end the day faster than falling into the water. And we want you guys to be out there as long as you can, having a great day. When we come back, we'll show you some of the new innovations from the world of camping. Mankind has been sleeping outside for a long time, but never this well. Arkansas's Great Outdoors is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers, by Visit Hot Springs, America's first resort, by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, by Vexus Boats, and by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish, the safe bait. People are loving what we're doing, and it's just not the surface stuff, it's everything inside. When the Vexus VX and DVX series was designed, it was designed from the ground up. Convex holes. We dropped our fuel tank into the, the belly of the boat to help stability. That boat is wider up on top, but as soon as you get past that rub rail, you're going down and creating this V that is a monster. We have spray rails in the boat, always pushing water out and away from our driver, our passenger. One thing that's gonna stick out is the dead rise and the way that it rides in rough water. You know, this thing stays true, it rides great. With the holes that are deeper and wider, and they're built to handle the rough water. You don't get that without the infused composite construction because it's lighter and it's faster and it's stronger. And that process has given us the ability to build a product that will handle the rough water that's better than anything else out there on the market. We make every inch count. And I think that when you look at our designs and you open up a box or you stand on the deck, you say, wow. With the fork front end, the flared hull, the dead rise, the weight in the center of the boat, it all works together to have the best riding fishing boat out there. We love the innovation and state pride from our friends in Flippin' at Vexus Boats. It's great to see decades of boat building experience from our state setting a standard across the country. Now, spending time outside can be as primitive as you'd like. 
just go and enjoy like your great, great, great ancestors did, and that's still pretty great. But today, technology is taking our great and making it great, great if you want it. Here's a look at what's new in the outdoors. So this is another great option to extend your living space of your vehicle. So if you're using your car and you wanna use it as part of your campsite, we, you can have a tent that connects to it and you can sleep inside of your vehicle. You can put a mattress inside and sleep within your vehicle. This tent allows you to stand up and change, store gear, secured out of the rain and in a comfortable spot so that you can use your vehicle uh, to be more, more comfortable overnight. A lot of people are wanting to go that way because they feel more secure from, from the elements outside, whether that be weather, animals, etc., the bugs, the creepy, crawly things on the ground. This allows the people to uh, just have a different experience where they, they have the luxury of their car for camping overnight. Okay, so the other way to sleep is on top of your car, and that's what you're going to see up here, and that's a really great way to go. So this is going to be where you have a mounted tent to the top of your vehicle on the the vehicle's crossbars. And it's a great way to go because you're up off the ground, you're out of the dirt, and it's a very comfortable way to sleep. Typically, these type of tents have a mattress inside of them, so it's gonna feel more like home because of that mattress feel. So a very large space to be able to sleep in. This one that we're showing here is the size of a California king bed. So a very large sleep surface. You have the ladder to climb up, you're storing your gear, with uh, shoe, shoe pockets to be able to drop your, your shoes off when you're climbing into your tent, and a very roomy and spacious sleep system uh, that mounts to, to vehicles, even from you know, your Subaru on up to trucks, you know, SUVs, things like that. It's very comfortable, you feel very safe and protected because you're above everything, and it's big. You don't wanna do this if you have a problem sleepwalking is the camping tool here, the M20. Main feature of this as well is that this comes with a fire lighter. So you can strike the surface here to create the sparks you need to start a fire. It also comes with a rope cutter on this side, tent peg puller on the other side, so you can put your fingers in and pull out your tent pegs. Um, flathead screwdriver, a pry bar, as well as some other features as well. But super lightweight, compact, um, can fit in a jacket pocket or, or your pack. Don't even know you've got it until you need it. A great way to introduce your kids to camping is to do a backyard kind of glamping setup. Have all the amenities. Have food, snacks, a monitor playing one of their favorite movies. This slowly gets them comfortable with being outdoors but still having the security of being able to go back inside their house. As time goes on, you can slowly start moving your way into further locations, removing some of those luxuries, and finally allowing them to enjoy the outdoors as it is. And finally, the last knife is our outdoor hunting knife, which is the K300 fixed blade. So this one, again, um, classic design. You've got grip on the back, the jimping, um, for when you're uh, cutting. Also on the back surface, here and here, same thing. And then we've got a, a custom designed uh, sheath as well that can be mounted either vertically like that or horizontally where it can get mounted on, the, on, on your back horizontally. Um, it's all about adventure and we want the brand to embody it and our products. So we want um, fundamentally the products are about functionality and you know just because it's functional doesn't mean it's boring it's not engineered it's designed it's designed with a customer in mind so we're all about how people are going to be using this i just saw that there was a lack of um, when we're looking at the multi-tools of innovation in that space and um, they multi-tools had been the same way for quite a while and so that's when we started to you know i've got a background in material science and industrial design and so we really wanted to utilize that technology and materials to really challenge things and that's when we started to use this material which is 70 percent glass so very um, different from what anyone else uses but the, it's the fact that it's strong and light makes it uh, such a difference and so we'll be able to create these unique products
New products are always around the corner as outdoors enthusiasts combine campers' needs with new technology, and we will keep bringing you new and interesting innovations right here. Now, when we come back, we'll get back to our first fish angler who is just about to catch his first ever fish, and it's all on camera. Arkansas's Great Outdoors is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers, by Visit Hot Springs, America's first resort, by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, by Vexus Boats, and by Certified Arkansas Bait Fish, the same. It's no secret that I love when we get to do a first fish segment. The opportunity to see someone catching a fish for the first time is a thrill, young and old. A new angler is our goal and we are adding one right now. His name is Bob Cahoon, a Chicago native spending some time here in the South who realized to truly experience Arkansas, you gotta catch a fish. Okay, so here we're gonna try something else. Okay. Bring the rod tip down like almost like you're pointing it at the bait and then reel up the slack. Gotcha. And then just, gotcha. then just move it. You just want that bobber to come towards you about a foot. And what that does, look at there, see that? Okay, there you go. Ah, look here, keep reeling. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. We got yes. us a world-class crappie right there. Okay. Hey. Congratulations, Thank man. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you are a you, fisherman. Yeah, you. you just like the apostles of old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'll say. That's world class right there. That is a good sized crappie. It's the best tasting freshwater fish. This, stu this stuff tastes good. Crappie tastes good. good. Beautiful. That's going to be huh? a good tasting piece of fish. Oh, wow, that's awesome right there. Well done, Coach. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Very good. <laughs> and bring that arm straight to the camera so it looks like it's four feet. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Look at that. Go. It's all the That's way from his head it. to his That's torso. It. That's a huge <laughs> crappie. That's it. Way. There you go. Seriously. Yeah. You stop at one. <laughs> yeah. This, no. We, 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 we got a lot of we got a lot of mouths to feed tonight. That's absolutely. Yeah. Is, that, is, that a, is that a par or a birdie? <laughs> That's, That's right. a yeah. fishy. That's, That's a fishy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's put another minnow on. The reason why you want to keep your rod tip down, it would be like yeah. putting yeah. the driver right behind the ball with no backswing. Right. Yeah. We're going to give that minnow one more shot and then we're going right. to fire him. Right. And back yeah, over that right way? Yeah, right back over there, okay. even a little bit deeper. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Uh-huh. So okay. Pull it Can towards I... you about a foot. Let's just make sure we're not hung up. Not it looks something. like we're good. Okay. Oh, oh, look at there. Oh, yeah! Look at that hook set. That was a championship hook set right there. That was instinct. Oh, I lost him. Nope, nope no, no, there. he's still there. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was instinct. You didn't there need you anybody go. coach you on see, that. See that? Yeah. That's a little wimpy. Fish number two, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right, so first time is an aberration, second time's a trend. There you there. go. There you go. Nice pose. Give your minnow just a little six inch. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, look at there. <laughs> Man, he didn't waste any time. <laughs> Ooh. Twitch on the bobber and boom. There's another crappie. Uh-huh. Look a at smaller. it. No, he's still good size. We got there us an go. angler here. So once is an aberration, twice is a trend, three is a pattern. <laughs> go. Bob's on the pattern. We've got crappie, we've got dinner, and we got a new angler. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Bob, we welcome you to the family of anglers. We can fish again and invite your Chicago buddies down south for a dinner of crappie. Now, of course, up north, they call it crappie, and we never have a crappy dinner down here. And there will be no more dad jokes in this show because we are wrapping it up. We hope you enjoyed touring Devil's Den State Park, one of Arkansas's great ones with beauty matched only by its history. We got to show you some great camping items to help you enjoy an overnight trip with something new. And of course, Bob joined the Crappie Club, a great first fish times three. Thank you for watching. We appreciate the sponsors who make this show possible and each of you for tuning in every week.